G'day, it's Clint Patterson here with another video on reversing rheumatoid arthritis symptoms. And today I have an email from Sheila and she says she's on day seven and her digestion is improving. Uh, but she goes on to add the comment that she's going to judge her success with her progress based on pH testing. So she says my pH testing remained high when before this diet it was low. And what she's referring to there is pH testing where a normal pH level uh, is between 7 and 8 for the human body fluids that are not inside the blood. So think of all the water in the body that isn't inside the blood. Um, and she's planning on using tests to monitor whether or not the levels of her non-blood fluids go up because a acid environment is low numbers one through six is is acid range and uh, seven neutral and upwards from seven to 14 is alkaline so she's looking to see if measuring this will indicate success for her well i've replied to sheila and given an explanation around this and referred to some of the materials in her program that she's purchased um, so as to make some of this clearer and let me share this with you so first of all let's look at how we can measure the acid alkaline balance in the body and uh, the most common way that it's done is either saliva based methods which are very very inaccurate and urine test strips which you pee on and then the color changes on the strip indicating uh, acid alkaline and this also is very inaccurate so you've got saliva test very very inaccurate and urine test very inaccurate and let me clarify what i mean by inaccurate well if we look at it from a physics point of view which is my background I tested this multiple times over many, many weeks where I would take two urine test strips and I would pee on both of them using the same sample at the same time. And then I would observe that both of these urine test strips who had the same exact exposure were giving quite different appearances on their readings. So as just a baseline test, I was noticing a, a quite a unacceptable variance on the urine test stripped readings. So this was quite bothering because on one of them, I might read a 7.0. On the next one, I might read what appears to be around a 6 or 6 to 7. And that is a huge change in a pH level when it is a logarithmic scale. So a six is 10 times different to a seven, which is 10 times different to an eight. And so these are enormous differences on the strip. And so to make matters worse, if you are only to pee on the strip an hour apart and you've had a uh, meal in between, or well, let's say a fluid rich meal, and, and this is going to influence the strip as well. And so where I'm going with this is that if you are hoping to use urine test strips as a way of measuring progress of your acid alkaline balance, then it is not a great tool to provide that information. And so what do you do instead? Well, what I did is I just went to the science and looked at what exact foods create the best alkalinity in the body and which foods should I avoid which create more acidity in the body? And we know that the body is susceptible to the food intake uh, being responsible for the acid alkaline levels. There's a great number of scientifically published studies about this. Um, and one study that I really liked, I used to summarize a list of acid alkaline foods. Uh, and you can find these acid alkaline foods lists online, but they're very, very much in conflict with each other. And I referred to a Dr. McDougall 
um, newsletter to find the right one that was acceptable and accurate. And then what I did is I went and uh, grabbed that acid alkaline um, information and referenced it and put it inside an acid alkaline PDF chart. So right now what you're looking at is inside the Patterson Program for Rheumatoid Arthritis uh, dashboard or um, materials. Um, and so if you scroll down to ebooks and overview, and in fact, where am I actually? No, I'm down in the troubleshooting guide at the moment. Click on alkalizing, and there is a 24 minute video here explaining all about the acid alkaline balance and how too much acidity causes bone mineral loss and leads to osteoporosis and so on. And also describes how the synovial fluid of people with inflammatory arthritis, and in the study it was rheumatoid arthritis. Um, the synovial fluid is much more acidic in people with rheumatoid arthritis than just osteoarthritis. And so all very much supportive of an acid alkaline imbalance for people with RA. And if you click on the acid alkaline PDF uh, chart that's inside your Patterson program materials, it will load up this acid alkaline forming potential of common foods. Now, this video isn't all about this particular guideline and I don't want anyone to get too obsessed about acid alkaline as the main strategy for trying to select foods and trying to get well. However, I believe it is one of the factors and therefore I include the materials in the program. And I want to give you an example here of why it's a pretty good guideline. And first of all, let me explain the numerical markers here. Um, these are not pH levels. So we're not looking at, in this case, buttermilk of 0.5 pH. No, this is a relative number. It's a potential renal acid load of foods and its influence on urine pH. So these numbers are just relative to each other. Don't get caught up on what the absolute number is. Just look at something like spinach, which is the most alkaline forming of all of the foods done in the study, and compare it to something like uh, one of these cheeses. Okay, so you can see that a cheese is extremely acid forming, whereas the most extreme alkaline end of the spectrum measured was spinach. And just by way of practical example, if you were to eat cheese all day, you are going to also notice an extreme increase in pain versus eating spinach all day, which is fabulous at pain reduction, whether it be cooked or raw. And using the acid alkaline chart here, you can actually do reasonably well at reducing inflammation in a rheumatoid arthritis person, probably yourself. However, it is not the be all and end all. It is a good guideline, but it is not the whole picture. And um, as I said before, uh, you know, we don't want to get too caught up on this. However, I believe that there are some, some really good reassuring aspects, like the example that I just gave. Um, as to why this is a supportive document whilst not being the be-all and end-all. So if we come back over to the Patterson Program um, materials over here, and uh, again, so you can find it in troubleshooting, come down to alkalizing, and if you want to go ahead, you can uh, uh, watch this video on alkalizing for rheumatoid arthritis relief. And, uh, and check out that chart. And if you don't have the Patterson program, I still hope that this video was useful. And as I explained to Sheila back here, um, the best way to measure whether you're improving on the program is to use C-reactive protein and sed rate inflammatory marker uh, measurements, which are blood measurements. That's number one. And prior to that, you should also experience an increase in energy levels because as our microbiome improves, the body creates more 
B vitamins and B vitamins are strongly linked to energy. So we'll notice a increase in energy. We normally increase our mood as well. Our happiness or our, just our general well-being improves as we get a sense of healing, a sense of wellness and just a, you know, a better overall feeling of, uh, of happiness and well-being. And of course, just we'll notice less inflammation in the body. And as inflammation uh, goes down, you know, we'll notice that our range of motion improves through our grip, throughout our fingers and elbows or whatever it might be that's being affected. And so in summary, I discourage the use particularly of saliva uh, pH measurement. That's virtually a waste of time. Uh, so, and urine, I consider, you know, speaking frankly, a waste of time as well when we are dealing with uh, rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory arthritis conditions, and we're looking for those other uh, uh, indicators of improvement that I have just outlined with C-reactive protein and sed rate being the most definitive and quantitative ways to measure the improvements that you make as you go through the Patterson program. So I hope that's been helpful and continue the wonderful and noble task of improving your health.